Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we have a Paleo Frog deck featuring the new Paleozoic Link Monster. And its Link Monster gives the deck a really good aggressive edge just because it basically makes access code for free, which is what it does. And um, it's really easy to do, and this uh, replay will kind of showcase what exactly it does. So, right here, um, standard hand, bunch of traps, uh, part of desires is cool. So, um, let's start off with that. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and banish 10. Uh, we do banish a good couple of cards. I'll probably switch off the um, sound effects. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, our banishes are not too good. We've banished two Olenoids versus the Lair of Darkness deck. Um, we've also banished a Compulse, which isn't um, too. Um, well, we don't really banish anything else too notable. Um, we banish Dynamiscus, but that's not too bad either. So we're gonna go ahead and swap Frog in order to um, dump Ron Toad in. Uh, I do make a bit of a mistake here, here where I directly go into Toad. I probably should have uh, used Swap Frog's effect to bounce itself and then normal summon itself again to fuel my graveyard with another Frog. But you know, it's fine. It doesn't make too much of a difference. Uh, then we just, you know, set four paths. So now we're gonna go ahead, go into Sunby, we use Toad. Uh, I'll chain Morella in order to dump something. And then, uh, it was a misclick, I meant to summon Swap Frog and say it's dead, but it doesn't matter too much. So he's going to use Terraforming, so he's going to Lair of Darkness. He has Triple Lair of Darkness. Um, he's going to activate it. I decided to negate it, because obviously I'm going to negate Lair of Darkness against a Lair of Darkness deck. Um, but he has the extra two copies, so um, he gets to revive in negation. Uh, he's going to use Part of Duality, grabbing a copy of Lilith. Uh, he's going to also summon Lilith, use his effect. Uh, Lair of Darkness will allow him to tribute my Toad. Um, but you know, I just activate Canadia because why not? I guess uh, this will also trigger my Olenoids in Graveyard to summon itself. Um, he sets a Dogmatic of Punishment by revealing three of it, and then Toad's Graveyard effect will trigger adding Swap Frog back to my hand. Uh, so he sets a Trap Trick, which gives him access to everything, and passes. So now he's going to use Lair of Darkness. Um, he can't summon any tokens because of Part of Duality. So now we will go ahead Normal Summon. Whoa. <laughs> Looks, looks like a Meadow Pro can't feel the force, the power of the frog. Uh, give me a moment right here. So, um, we are back here. <laughs> Sorry for that. So we're gonna roll some Swap Frog. Uh, he uses Dogmatic of Punishment. Uh, for some reason, he doesn't seem to be playing. That. I don't know why he didn't just send send Untis to pop, but sending Untis wouldn't matter too much either since um, I do have the extra Paleos in my graveyard and um, I also have Ronin Toad in my graveyard. So once um, Swap Frog resolves, I will probably dump a Ronin Toad in. Um, also, yeah, he, I could have also just chained a Canadia to his um, cart. I had a Morale in my graveyard, I forgot to chain that, but it's fine. I, I'll just chain it to his trap trick. I'll probably chain Morala to his trap when he activates it. Uh, so now Punishment will go ahead pop by Swap Frog. For some reason, he sends Blue Eyes Alternative Dragon. I mean, he's he's a Lair of Darkness player. He has like less below average brain cells. He can't do much about it. So um, I'm gonna go into Opabinia, and then we will see the power of the Paleo Link in a moment. We're gonna go ahead and use Opabinia, searching the Dynamiscus, and since Opabinia is in the field, we can activate Paleos from our hand. I'm gonna use Effect, targeting Lair of Darkness, discarding Dynamiscus, will also chain the Morel in a graveyard, summoning it. And then we will go ahead and link into Cam Roaster. Cam Roaster is able to pop your opponent's set cards, which is really prevalent in this current meta. Um, so we're going to pop that back to the front. We're going to go ahead and set another card, which is our Lean Colia, which fills our graveyard up with a dupe frog just for a Ron Toten. We can chain down a Miskis, summoning it itself. And then we we'll use the Ron Toten, summon it. And then from here, we can go into Link Spider, um, into like a Nightmare Unicorn or something, then go to. Then you, we really just can just go into access code for free right here, so our opponent kind of just um, you know surrenders. We can't do much with a Diablos and a Lair of Darkness, especially against an Ice Dragon's Prison, since um, I can always just get rid of his Lil from there too. Um, you, I also have the ability to go into a um, totally awesome from here if I really want to, but I'd rather. Um, well, since I know I'm not going to be able to OTK this turn, I'd rather just go for the Toad, to be honest. Um, I think it's going to top deck a Trap Trick, which, once again, can't really do much if, um... Can't do much if you're just going to set and pass. I have the Toad on field, so you can't do anything. Um, just, you know, the Paleo Link is really strong. Gives you free access code and gives you a really good, um, 
ed um, aggressive edge the deck was missing. And on top of that, you the aggressive edge that some people thought would be Zeus, but you're not blowing up your entire back row with Zeus now, so that is really cool too. Um, that is kind of the quick replay to show um, what the Link monster is capable of. It popped my opponent's back row, it let me set Alien Coleo, which helped me. Uh, this could also be an Olenoides, uh, so that would be two pops right there. I also get an extra body, uh, Rowan Totem is another body, and then I can like go into access code for free. So um, I'll kind of just showcase the uh, deck profile now. Right here we have the deck, starting off with our frogs, uh, triple swap, double Ronin, triple dupe. Uh, it's pretty standard, you don't really go, you don't really stray away from this. Uh, we don't run any other monsters, not even hand traps, mainly since um, in this current format, it's like, you don't really need hand traps as, um, Nece they're not as necessary as they were last format and um, you can just use your normal traps this turn so traps are good again and it's really good. Um, so starting off triple swap frog just fills your graveyard card like Ronin Toad and can even summon itself from your hand it also gives you an extra normal summon it does everything. Uh, double Ronin Toad in, uh, to you only really need one since it is able to just summon itself from the graveyard once you get it in the graveyard. Um, sometimes you might need the second one to be honest but um, a double toad, really good. Uh, we have the triple dupe frog. Uh, dupe frog is um, pretty good, is able to search your swap frog. Um, just if you just send past it, once you're going out, so you do get the extra search. Comes that fills your graveyard for Ronin Toad, and so it's really nice to have. Uh, that's for monsters or spells, triple desires, that's the only spell we run. Uh, desires is really good since you don't really, you're not really afraid of banishing anything, um, apart from maybe double Ronin Toad, in, which is super unlikely of banishing. Of two copies of something in that desires. So um that's something. Next we run the one Paleozoic Lean Koila. Uh this is mainly to recover some of your banished cards, like maybe something you banish up toad or one of your banished paleo traps, since they will get banished when you use as link material for camp roaster. So being able to refill your graveyard is really nice. Um so the one lane Koila, especially since right now the meta does have a lot of cards that can banish cards. Uh, such as say Paquero in terms of Eldritch or um, Ice Dragon's Prison that also exists so uh, you do have to be careful with the Alien Coila. Um, we have the Triple Ice Dragon's Prison. Uh, Ice Dragon's Prison is basically probably the best generic trap right now just because it is able to um, not only DD Crow your opponent but also banish a card on their field which is really really good. Um, next we have the double heavy storm duster. I'm just doing two of it for now uh, since you know it does it's kind of matchup dependent but um, since there are lots of um, spell trap decks spell or trap decks right now uh, heavy storm duster is pretty good. Uh, Olenoids. Olenoids is um, one of the three best um, paleo cards. Uh, it ju it's just able to pop cards um, spell traps on the field especially in a spell trap heavy format. Uh, Olenoides is able to pop face up cards and um, it's only weakness is that it can't pop face down cards, which is really covered by Camp Roaster since it is able to um, get rid of your opponent's face down cards and generate you advantage from there. So you're just able to pop up the Dynamiscus. Um, we have Triple Quaking Report. This card is good right now. Yeah, it's unironically really good right now. Just being able to flip your opponent's entire board since their link monsters aren't like the most prevalent thing. It's able to out Dragoon, it's able to pretty much out everything you need. It's just really, really good this format. Um, next, we have the uh, double Paleozoic Morella. It's mainly to fill up your graveyard with cards, also deck thins a bit, which is really good. Its main um, use is just being for the uh, deck thinning. Um, and dumping cards in graveyard, filling your cards with cards with Paleozoic traps to revive themselves and then you can go into a rank 2 and then into Zeus or something. A triple Lost Wind, uh, the reason I'm using Lost Wind is just because it is able to um, reset itself in a situation where I do need to do that. Um, although, uh, as opposed to Lost Wind, I probably would run something else. Um, maybe a Crackdown? Eh, not really, but last one is still a pretty good card regardless. Um, uh, it's still able to hit a good couple of things, like um, it is able to hit stuff like Zeus permanently since it does negate 
cards permanently. Um, it can potentially hit a calamity, but it's probably not going to. Um, but its main use is just being able to reset itself and just be able to you. You can just use it again for your paleo traps. Um, we have the triple compulse just to be a free bounce. Um, we have the triple Canadia. It's book of moon. <laughs> it was that triple book of moon. <laughs> Um, being able to flip your one bosses is really good, especially in a card that's able to just re re revive itself. Uh, triple Solemn Strike. Strike is really, really good, just being able to negate summons, negate monster effects. Uh, if you want, you can put a Solemn Judgment in the side deck. Um, uh, yeah, I'd probably put a Judgment in the side deck, depending on matchup. But Strike just really good uh, outing your opponent's monsters. For Extract, we run Double Zeus. Um, I was kind of hesitating to run double Zeus, but since I did only have space for one access code lineup, I decided to just run double Zeus for um, a grinder game. Uh, double Animal Locurus, um, I don't know how to spell it, but uh, you make it if you have like a ton of Paleos on field, and what it's able to do, it's able to um, not only a a excavate the top cards of your deck and um, add it to your hand if it's a trap, and keep in mind, three quarters of your deck is traps, it's just a bunch of traps, and it's also able to just it's also a Dryden. Yep, it is a Dryden. Uh, just discard one, uh, detach one material, pop one. And the reason why detaching material in this deck is super good is because um, you can detach like a Canadian or something, and they they just recur themselves from your graveyard again, which is really stupid. Um, it's, but its main restriction is it's, it requires three or more level two monsters. Unfortunately, it's unaffected by monster effects too, which is um, really good. Uh, next, we run the Triple Toad. And Toad is that. Free unlock the toad. Um, it's able to summon frogs from your deck, so you can summon stuff like swap frog in order to fill your graveyard with extra things. And then you can also just negate stuff on top of that when sent to the graveyard. You can uh, recur a water monster too, um, and you can recur. Usually, you're just going to recur swap frog for the extra advantage. Uh, double Obabinia, I might bump this up to 3 if I really want to, uh, mainly because its effect is busted. Just for 2 level 2 monsters, you're able to activate Paleozoic traps from your hand, so um, that is just covers the main weakness of trap cards. On top of that, it's a, you're able to detach one to search a Paleo trap card, and um, since you can activate it fr from your hand, um, you're able to um, recur your Paleo trap cards uh, from your graveyard too. Next we run the access code, it is a lot easier to make just because of the new Link Monster Camp Roaster. Uh, we have the Unicorn and Phoenix just for extra spot removal. Uh, double Camp Roaster, it's, this card is really good. Not only is it able to protect all of your uh, trap cards, um, I mean all of your set cards, um, when it's in the graveyard, you're also just able to, um, not only, it's, you're able to set, like, uh, how do I explain this? Like. Uh, say it can out, it can target any set card on the field, even your opponents, even yours. And if it's your set card, you are usually just gonna chain that card just so that you do get the extra bit of advantage there. Uh, and then once you do that, uh, you can just immediately set one. So not only are you gaining normal advantage by activating your trap card, you're also getting another one from your deck, and it can be activated this turn. And it also triggers your paleo traps in the graveyard, uh, being able to just summon themselves. Those paleo trap cards go into Link Spider, just as an extra attribute for your access code, and then you can just uh, blow up your point from there. So that is the deck, uh, it's really good, it's really good just being able to uh, generate advantage over time and just flood the board with monsters um, that just recur themselves, it's really annoying and um, you should definitely give the deck a try. Do leave your thoughts on the deck down below, uh, if you have any suggestions I'll look at them too and before then, um, next time then I guess.